Hi, I'm Jack Grimmer at Wickham Wanderers, and you're listening to Wickham Sound. The Wickham Wanderers Show. Welcome to this week's edition of the Wickham Wanderers Show. Plenty of Chair Boys content for you in the next hour in what I believe is our penultimate, penultimate show of the season. Uh, we're heading towards the uh, business end now. And uh, the table obviously looking much better as well after that fantastic victory at uh, Port Vale on Tuesday night. Uh, goals in either end of the game. Uh, fantastic to see Nigel Lomvig back on the score sheet. And uh, also, of course, David Wheeler very early in the game as well. We'll catch up with Phil in a few moments' time to review that and look ahead to the trip to Carlisle and find out how he's making the trip and the rest of the team as well, because it's a long way, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, you'd imagine he'd be calling at many service stations en route as well. We'll hear from manager Matt Bloomfield on a couple of occasions in this hour, uh, looking ahead to that trip to Carlisle, as I say, and reviewing the performance at Port Vale. And thanks to Wickham Wanderers X Players Association, we're very privileged to get to speak to their second oldest surviving member, uh, Dick Tunmer, uh, who uh, is living in Bourne End and is celebrating today his 95th birthday, surrounded by his family. Uh, Shirley, his wife of 67 years, and his daughters and his grandchildren and his great-grandchildren. A real pleasure to uh, share his thoughts and memories as well. We'll switch our attention to Wicked Wanderers women and hear from Imani, who's a fantastic winger who only signed for the club last month has made her debut, already scored as well, and uh, we'll look ahead to uh, next season as well as uh, what the, the team hopes to achieve for the remainder of this campaign as well. Uh, we'll bring you some news from Wickham Wanderers Foundation and uh, preview what's to come in the coming weeks of this programme as well. But first, uh, we spoke to Phil uh, shortly after, uh, the, the more, sort of the morning after, I suppose you might say, the night before. Uh, he, he and uh, Matt Sessler from the club stayed up in the potteries after the Port Vale trip to attend the uh, EFL uh, conference which was taking place for uh, club media content and uh, he spoke to us from there about uh, what was of course his 500th uh, a fantastic milestone commentary of Wicked Wanderers and how that went well it was a win which was good and a decent game uh, so uh, from that respect very good indeed uh, yeah 500 uh, you know to use the Adebayo I can throw my number it's just a number isn't it but yeah so on reflection, quite a lot of talking, probably quite a lot of talking rubbish for quite a long period of time. So, yeah, and I'd like to point out as well uh, that Wickham at some points in their time in this last sort of 10 years have uh, have played slightly longer than 90 minutes on the average game. So, actually, it's uh, even longer when you think of it in that respect. But, no, you know, great to, to notch up the numbers and lovely to hear from the fans. And, yeah, more importantly, uh, to call a win last night. No one's on the beach at Wickham Wanderers, I think it's safe to say. Uh, having seen the performances of late and uh, and the results too, so yeah, good 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 from every aspect. Very enjoyable. Obviously, you should only take one game at a time, so obviously we'll focus on that one. But for, for a moment, we'll move on to Carlisle at the moment. But as you, as we'll hear from the manager shortly, you know, it was great that you know the performances recently have been fantastic, and the form table doesn't lie. Yeah, and I think we've got to give a lot of credit really to the gaffer because, like I said, as soon as we became safe, is there a little subconscious switch in the back of someone's mind that thinks, oh, you know, we'll, we'll be good to go on holiday this year or, or yeah, I might not quite exert myself quite so hard because I don't want to get injured. I want to make sure I get a good sort of off, off period and come back to uh, for pre-season. This is pre-season. I get that impression. I really do. And, you know, players looking to impress. Uh, there's, there's certain players out of contract as well and, and other people too. So, yeah, I think it's, it's a really good sort of environment and there's no sort of letting off. And I think there's a big big sort of drive to finish as high up the table as possible which sounds like a really trite or cliche thing to say but you know psychologically I think it's hugely important last night we moved into the top half of the table uh, and that's important in, in the days of CFAX that's, an, that's another 30 seconds of your life you've just got back by not having to wait for the pace to rotate <laughs> so you know it's important things psychologically I think for the fans' perspective, obviously the worry is there when you're looking over your shoulder at the bottom four. That's been removed. So the fans perhaps are able to enjoy it a little bit more. I don't think many people were enjoying the football at Shrewsbury in the first half uh, in any sense, really. It's game, tough conditions. Uh, but they enjoyed the result and, and, and the substitutions in the second half. And last night, you know, it was a it was a it was a game where we were an opposition were absolutely desperate to win because they were right in it down at the bottom and, and even further in it now as a result of losing to us last night. Um, so there is an element of enjoyment, a little bit of voyeurism perhaps, uh, but we all want to see progress being made and we are seeing it, which is really pleasing to see. And it was great to speak to the gaffer after the game who was buzzing. Yeah, absolutely delighted. I think that um, you know, obviously with the schedule that we've had, um, Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday, Tuesday, we've 
we've picked up a few knocks, we've picked up a few niggles and we're having to keep rotating and trying to keep us as fresh as we can. It's, I think it's hard for the boys because we keep churning out a different team without any prep time really in terms of um, proper team play. So it's, it's testing the group, but I, I thought, you know, there's some really good bits coming out of the performance tonight, far from perfect, but I actually thought there's some really good elements, character and, um, you know, a real win and this desire to get another three points on the board was in abundance. So, um, yeah, yeah, really, really pleased. And it's a time of season where the league table really comes into it. Port Vale scrapping for their lives and we saw that today, didn't we? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, they were, I thought they were very good in the way they set up. We know Darren's team's playing a, a three, a three five two, a, a really, a really good. Um, they went to a diamond halfway through the first half and they had an injury and, and changed. And so obviously it affected our prep because we had to adapt in game. And I thought it rocked us for a little while. Um, obviously playing into Loft and playing into Ooch, I felt that they had a, a real big threat. So um, obviously the changes made a good difference to us today. I thought that first half we were very, very good. We could have been three 0 up in what 10 15 minutes maybe I'm not sure what the clock said I think we could have been three and up and out of sight early on um, shame we weren't really because then you know one nil it's always going to be a tough game especially with um, with a team that's fighting for their lives and a full respect for the way that they, they played so yeah I, you know it's always going to be a tough night from that point but to show the character to go 1-1 and then to find a winner and yeah, absolutely delighted mate really great game to watch very physical as well he must have been delighted with the physical side of Wickham's game today as well as what they did with the ball yeah we, we knew the physical aspect was coming so we picked a team that we felt could deal with that and I felt we did um, yeah we, we you know within this league there's loads of different styles of games um, and you have to try and pick you know we saw at Wembley last week we picked a team that we felt you know uh, needed to play that game for Peterborough and, and tonight it's a different um, challenge that you're coming up against so it's a it's a different element that we have to show in our performance and we have to be able to mould ourselves but you know obviously the form we're on um, I think in the last 15 games before tonight we were fourth in the form table so we'll be even better after tonight and um, so you know it's a third of the season now where we're showing real good form and we want to build on that you know I think there's been so much hard work um, and dedication um, that's gone into this season in terms of picking up the pieces for some, from some tough games and, um, you know, with some tough days, we've really got ourselves in, um, you know, a solid footing um, with which to build and we really hope to be able to build on what we can do now going into the last three games and then um, into the summer. And away from home, drawing 1-1 and, and a late winner. It, it was a, two teams trying to win the game, really. It wasn't thinking, right, we'll take a point from a tough place to go. That was very much a team looking for the three points. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I think back to some of the games earlier in the season, I genuinely think that Portsmouth away when the late goal goes in, it's a foul. Or Barnsley away when we could have nicked the winner, another foul that goes in against us. You know, it's not been all doom and gloom. There's been some t- real tough days, mate, and some real long journeys home. And it'd be remiss of me not to, to understand that and, and remind myself of the lessons we've learned. But we're a long way to go, um, but we've made some good good steps forward. And I think the, the energy we have about us at the moment is really, really nice to see. You know, it's a real squad effort at the moment and I'm having to rotate and, and try and keep the energy on the pitch. And, and the boys are doing that. I want to take that into Carlisle at the weekend and your left back pops up at the right wing in the 84th minute with the winner yeah I don't remember practicing that one so I'm gonna have to look back and see what we were doing at that point uh but yeah it's um you know we think I think a lot of Nigel um you know he's come in and you know as with a lot of the loanies we've had this year Potsy and and Dalo um I, f- I apologize who I've left out in terms of Gideon Jemmy the way they've really bought into who we are and what we are and, and what we're trying to do uh, I was speaking to Lukey about it at lunch and he was saying you'd never guess that these boys are loanies not permanent Wickham Wanderers players because of the way they've conducted themselves so yeah listen I think you'd, you'd think Nigel's been here for a couple of years the way he's in amongst the group uh, and he's done he's done great hasn't he so um, played him left back again tonight because I wanted to see Luki in midfield alongside Butch um, Potsy obviously got a knock Joshy was carrying a bit of a tight back and tight hamstrings we had to be careful with him he's so important to us so throw a team out and um, yeah your left back comes up with a winner it's obviously a nice night so squad rotation but also looking ahead as well at your options Oh, of course, yeah. You know, Lukey, we brought in as a midfield player at the start of the season and has spent um, probably 90% of the time as a left side of three or, or a left fullback. Um, obviously, we've had the injuries to Saxon and Kane Vincent Young, which, is, which has forced us into using him as a, as a fullback more often than what maybe he would have liked and we would have liked. We brought him as a, as a midfield player and, and we've had to adapt off the back of it. We've also got Nigel, I thought was outstanding when he played there last week against Derby. He was very, very good again tonight. So, um, wanted to have a look at Lukey midfield. We've also got to be wary of the fact that Pot 
Potsies have got a, you know a big dead leg at the weekend, and we hope he'll be back for the week uh, for Carlisle, but we will have to wait and see on him. Joshy obviously had a bit of a tight hamstring while we had to take him off at the weekend. He was absolutely fine, but you know want to be careful with him. We can't have him breaking down, so um, he's so important to us. So yeah, we have had to rotate the pack. Um, so maybe that was maybe some um, you know moments where we weren't quite as fluent as maybe we'd want to be. But to, to the boys to play with a character and the way they they play tonight, I'm I'm, I'm so pleased. Uh, something which he picked out as well, which I think is quite key, is that obviously the, the amount of changes that he's had to make, uh, especially with the, the fixture congestion that we're experiencing at the moment. I think it's a perfect problem for him to have at this time of the season because, you know, I said there are players out of contract. He's going to want to have a look at people. He's going to want to try a few things out. And he can do that now under the cloak of, of, of fixture congestion, which is perfect because he can say, look, you know, we're monitoring minutes. We don't want to get people injured. We're making sure everyone's in their optimum shape. So I can change out the centre-backs this week or I can do this, I can do that. And it's perfect timing. Um, because if this was sort of six months ago, everyone would be like, oh, you know, he doesn't know his best 11, what's going on? This is exactly the time for us to be looking at these players, these systems, uh, and, and working out where relationships are, working out what things are working, perhaps what things aren't. And he's really grabbing those opportunities with both hands. The fact that we're getting results as well makes life a lot easier, as it always does. And great to see some players that we've not seen for a while. Joe Jacobson, for example, is edging towards his 400th appearance. Look, you know, he came on in injury time and he's got all that experience when you're winning a game by one goal uh, in a situation that, that's pretty fiery in terms of Port Vale. Like I said, he would literally would have cut their arms off to, to get the equaliser or even a winner last night. Um, what better person to bring on at that stage of the game? You know, all the know-how in the world, Joe Jacobson. Um, so, yeah, and, you know, yes, he's, he's heading towards that 400 appearances uh, for Wickham Wanderers. But, you know, I think him coming on at that stage of the game, that's not like a, 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 a just, just get him on and get the numbers up. This is a, an experienced pro coming on who can play on that left-hand side. He can play, he can step in and play centre-back. He can do that. He can read the game really, really well. He can manage a game probably better than anyone I've seen in the Wickham shirt in, in recent years. So really important that he's part of the squad and around the group. And like he has been all season, we may not have seen him on the pitch very much. He may not have even been in the squad a huge amount. He may have spent a bit of time with me in the commentary box. He's around the training ground day in, day out. He's around the players. And that knowledge is being sort of passed on by osmosis, really. It's really important role that he's played this season and it shouldn't it shouldn't be understated and some great solidity being shown at the back as well you mentioned uh, in the commentary how uh, Ryan Tafazoli and Chris Farino are doing and also uh, Franco of course in goal mm. big test last night for them both as well um, Tafazoli and big Chris at the back because you know it was a sort of a dual sign of monster up front in terms of Iqpiazu and Loft, two very similar style players you know very physical really trying to exert themselves on the opposition so it was a big t test of the physical strength and mental strength of Ryan Tafazoli and Chris Farino, which they passed with flying colours. I thought Big Chris was excellent and he has been in recent games as well. tafazoli has got that kind of level-headedness and that calmness you need, but he could mix it too. Uh, and I thought, you know, the combination of the left and the right foot as well together was really excellent. I think Nigel at left-back, who is he's a centre-back by trade, but he's such a good footballer, you could probably play him anywhere across that back four. Uh, and he looked comfortable and, and obviously picked up his goal, popping off the right wing somehow too. But yeah, I think defensively, Resolute, um, uh, I think Franco did fantastic with the save in the first half. Uh, there was a lot of ball into the box at times as well and, and, and did well. So, look, you know, goalkeeper's been spoken about at length uh, in recent weeks and the, the clean sheet record means that it's Franco's position and, and you can't argue with that. Really great to get that clarification from, from the manager and the story behind Max's emergency loan as well on Ringing the Blues this week. Look, you know, he's not getting game time and there's only one goalkeeper per team. So there's going to be someone upset or frustrated about not being able to play. And, you know, I guess you'd want that as well, wouldn't you? You wouldn't want someone just to sit there and go, oh, OK, you know, it's all right. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens. You know, you want someone passionate and, and, and wanting to play. And, and I'm sure if Max gets the call back from Wickham or he has to come back and play for whatever reason, he'll do a fantastic job. But equally, if a team needs a, an experienced goalkeeper and the rules allow it, which the emergency situation does, then he's going to go and get game time, which can only benefit Wickham in this situation because if something was to happen to Franco and we needed Max back, then he's been playing matches. You know, I think Max, by his own admission, would be disappointed with the first goal he let in at Crew, but he could put that down to lack of game time recently. But if he goes and does well and sharpens himself up and keeps himself sharp and ready, then it could it could benefit Wickham between now and the end of the season, although we are running out of games. But we saw it with David Stockdale at Stevenage um, the other year. He went out on loan for uh, a week, 10 days, um, played fantastically well, came back almost a foot taller in terms of his confidence and whatever. Something happened at Wickham and he goes straight into the team and he's ready to roll. That's what you want. It's a win-win situation and we'll see what happens in the summer. 
No, it's a great point. And just finally, it was really interesting in the commentary where you pointed out that when uh, Wickham and Port Vale were due to play in January, how similar you know they were in terms of points and, and, and a situation. And now Port Vale obviously struggling down the bottom. And Carlisle clearly uh, a long way from Wickham uh, on Saturday geographically, but also a long way from from safety as well. Yeah, look, you can look at all the different approaches in, in football. You can talk about formations, you can talk about tactics. Let's talk about decisions. Uh, Port Vale uh, were level on points with Wickham Wanderers on the day that game was meant to be played in January. Uh, they were on a bad run. They lost a couple of decent low knees in the summer. Um, you know, the bad run continued. They changed the manager. Um, they brought in Darren Moore, who he won the League One playoff final last season, was a championship manager, has had success uh, elsewhere in his career, former player. Um, there was huge talk in January uh, on pressure on Matt Bloomfield and the Cougs came out, publicly backed him, backed him in the transfer window as well, which has been very successful. Um, and, you know, there's two stark differences there. We were both at the same point. We've both taken different routes and look where we are now. If, if Port Vale had done the same, would it, would it be working out now? We don't know. Um, you know, they changed the manager. They perhaps maybe should have focused more on the transfer window. It's easy to say now with hindsight. They changed the manager in February when it was too late for him to do any recruitment. He couldn't turn it around quickly. Uh, I think it was seven, eight games before they picked up a win under Darren Moore. So, yeah, maybe too little, too late. The games will run out for him. But, you know, from a Wickham point of view, you can only look at the decisions made and the strategy and you can only class it as a success from that position in January when you compare it to someone you were toe-to-toe with at the time. So, I think credit should be extended to the Cougs. Um There was a lot of noise around the club, a lot of noise around the situation. And fans, understandably so, unhappy with results. But, you know, as Rob kept saying, it's a long season. You know, stick with us, and uh, and they've delivered on this occasion. And presumably, Carlisle will, will pose a similar test as well, with them being battling down the bottom as well as Port Vale. Look, you know, there's similarities here as well. You know, they've they've just changed ownership now in, in this season. Uh, they've they've got an American family who've come from an American sport and into football for the first time. Uh, these are all things familiar for Wickham Wanderers fans. Uh, they've got a very popular manager who's got them into that division in the first place. Uh, they stuck by him. Uh, they've got relegated by by quite some distance. Let's be honest. Um, but there's no panic there. I think they're going to look at this as a strategy and come back um, stronger. Um, I think they'll stick with their manager uh, and and see where it, where they go from there. Um, but I think they've got a, a much longer term view on what's going on here. I think obviously, had they been a little bit closer to that dotted line, we may have seen some 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 decisions or some certain things changing around the squad or something. But um, they've sucked it up. They've got on with it. Um, but they're a dangerous opponent now because they have no pressure at all. They can't affect change on this season. Uh, they're already in their pre-season for next season too, like we are now. But they're going to be playing in a, in a lower division, which I'm pleased to say isn't happening to Wickham Wanderers. Enjoy the game and also the uh, multiple service stations. Indeed, mate. Well, I'm going on the train. So, um, you know, unless there's some huge news on transport <laughs> infrastructure, I won't be at the service. So oh, you'll miss are. out on that. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. Nice one, Colin. I'll speak soon, mate. Always a pleasure to have Phil on the show and uh, you can hear more from him next week and does feel like a bit of a missed opportunity there, doesn't it, on those service stations that he won't be visiting on Saturday because he's going on the train. i hear more from the manager later in the show and a bit more on that train journey as well. Uh, they'll be setting off tomorrow, as it seems. Uh, you can catch the interview with Matt Bloomfield in full on Wanderers TV and on the Wicked Wanderers website. Look out for Ringing the Blues as well. You can get this week's edition on the podcast as well. It'll be live on Wickham Sound on Tuesday night as build up to that game as well. A quick reminder, you'll be able to hear the whole match live on Saturday on Wanderers TV and on 106.6 here on Wickham Sound at the bottom team. Carlisle United already relegated playing League Two football next season. Wickham Wanderers' League One status is safe and we'll continue to uh, follow the club. We've got uh, a couple more episodes of this show between now and the end of the season. Part two's on the way here at Wickham Sound. Online, on Radio Player and on 106.6 FM. This is Wickham Sound. Tuesday evenings from 8. Chatsworth. Chat that's worth a listen with comedians. Sorry, that's my phone. It's Albert calling me. Albert, what are you doing? <laughs> right? You're phoning me by accident. Am I? Yes. I'm doing an interview now. Oh, uh, what should I do? We'll turn it off. Oh, hang on a second, Colin. Um... Most couples listening to this will have one super organised, energetic person like me, and they'll be married to someone who can't pick up a sock. It is the fate of the human race. <laughs> on the front row, there was a woman in her late 70s, and I just presumed that she would get very uptight if anything was near the mark, and she absolutely loved it. And I thought, of course, she's seen and heard everything. She's you know nearly 80 yeah, can I speak no I'm doing an interview can I go to the toilet you can go to the toilet yes that doesn't affect my interview does it well I don't know 
and Colin. If you do fancy a laugh on a Tuesday evening, I'll look forward to speaking to you then. Although due to the modern ways of listening, you can catch up anytime via the Listen Again feature on the website, which is sound.org.uk. Anyway, um, so um, I've completely lost my thread, but <laughs> that's Albert. <laughs> Part two of this week's Wicked Wanderer show coming up. We'll chat to Emani from Wicked Wanderers Women. Uh, she's a comparatively new signing, not been at the club long, and uh, is already scoring goals and is a fantastic winger as well. But first, uh, thanks to Wicked Wanderers Ex Players Association, a uh, very special guest this week, uh, someone who uh, is celebrating a fantastic birthday today. Uh, he's 95 years young, I'm sure he won't mind me uh, saying, uh, uh, celebrating with uh, his wife Shirley. They've been married for 67 years. They've got three daughters, nine grandchildren and four great-grandchildren. I hope uh, he's had a fantastic day today. Uh, Dick Tunmer, who isn't even the oldest uh, of Wickham Wanderers ex-players, surviving uh, association members, but as you can imagine, he's uh, very pleased to have reached such an age. I mean, if I met somebody else from 95, I'd think he was an old man, but... You just get there, you you wake up each morning, so and that's how you keep going on. I've been lucky, I think, in so much as, um, I, you know, obviously my, my memory goes a bit and um, I've got lots of aches and pains, but I, I feel I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too bad for my age anyway. And you're not even the oldest member of the Wickham Wanderers Ex-Players Association? Well... <laughs> I was for quite a while, and then suddenly, about a couple of years ago, someone else turned up who had had a few games for, for Wickham, who I think is about a year older than me. <laughs> so I, I've been knocked off my perch, but I, <laughs> I think I'm the only one who was perhaps a regular Wickham Wanderers player. And we'll, we'll talk, obviously, about your playing, but I understand you can even remember the first Wickham game that you saw. Oh, the first Wickham Wanderers game I watched was in April 1939, which was before the war, and I was nine years old, uh, living in Presswood, caught the bus into Wickham, and went to see Wickham play Wimbledon. And a number of those players that I watched then became friends or at least acquaintances of mine afterwards. So what were your memories of some of the players that you watched, and then, as you say, became friends? Wickham won the Amateur Cup, I think, in about 1931. And at least two of those players were playing the day I watched them in 1939. And who subsequently I got to know anyway. And how did you actually come to play for the club? Well, at 18, I had to do national service, which people did in those days. And I went into the army and I was already playing reasonable football at that stage. But when I came out of the army, I didn't think I'd be good enough for Wickham, so I, I went and played for Chesham. And had a good season. We won the Berks and Bucks Cup, and I played at Lopes Park a couple of times for Chesham. And, and that was it. And I happened to be in Aylesbury one day and met a... a, a an ex-Chesham player called Alan Gaunt, who had also played for Wickham. And I said to him, I wouldn't mind playing for Wickham. And he he said, well, they've got a new manager there called Jimmy McCormick, and I'll I'll put a word in for you. And the next thing I know is I have a letter from Alan Gaunt saying the new manager would, would like to see you down at Lopes Park one evening for training. And, and it all went from there. Can you remember your debut? Oh, yeah. I mean, I wasn't expecting to get in the first team, of course. I went there thinking I'd play in the reserves and might get a chance in the first team. But there was a new man, a new manager appointed called Jimmy McCormick. And um, he, I think he wanted to bring in one or two of his own players. And I happened to be one of the, the one or two that he wanted to bring in. So... From not expecting to be, you know, would have been quite happy to play in the reserve. Suddenly found I was in the first team. Late in the stone, oh, well, I think we played a, a Crystal Palace side in a friendly and, and probably had one or two other games. But um, the, the first league game I had was late in the stone away, which I think we drew. Anyhow, Leighton Stone were one of the big names in those days, and and to go there and get a draw was quite something. So that you know, got got off to a good start anyway. 
No, absolutely. What would you say are some of the highlights of your time at the club that you remember the best? Well, we got to the quarterfinals of the Amateur Cup and got drawn away at, at Barnet with a crowd of 10,000. We had also a Liverpool side called Marine Cross in the, in the Amateur Cup with a crowd of 12,000 at um, Lopes Park. But if you're asking me for the games, enjoyable games, I can remember playing Fulham Reserves at Lokes Park, beating them 3-2. And on that occasion, I I was up against a, a young lad called Johnny Haynes, who subsequently became the first £100 footballer with Fulham and captained England. And yeah, I was up against him at, at Lokes Park. And another memorable game was playing for Wickham, we did a tour of Holland playing one of the top Dutch sides and played over there. And I think that was probably one of the most enjoyable games I've ever played in. And obviously you played with some great characters and names from the from the, the club's history in, in the 50s as well. I wouldn't say we had any really big stars. The, the, the main player when I played was someone called Ken Butler. Within about a year ago, a, a Welsh rugby player called... Eddie Butler, who who was a broadcaster, died, who had played for Wales at rugby. He, his father was captain of the Wickham team when I played, and extremely good player, a little bit erratic, but um, on his day was as good as anything you, you, that was playing amateur football in those days. The names that I would name out would, would be lost to most people now, but I mean, there was... Johnny Blizzard, Frank Wesley, Dennis Atkins, some 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 very good some very good players. No, absolutely. And what was it like playing under the different managers that you played under? Well, the one who I could do no wrong with was a chap called Jimmy McCormick, who took me into the side, and because I was one of his players, I did all right, and he always seemed to be pleased with me. Unfortunately, he. He upset the committee and they decided to get rid of him. And in came a, a manager called Sid Can, who, again, was an extremely good manager, but completely opposite type of character to McCormick. And I never really settled with Sid. He, he, he was very quiet, uh, said had his own favourites, of which I wasn't one of them. Um, and I, I struggled with him. But uh, having said that, he, he was extremely successful for Wickham in his own right. But ev- eventually I fell out with him and um, I went off to play elsewhere. Uh, and that, that, was, that was it. And you had such a great career after your time at the club, of course, with Dulwich Hamlet and also as a player manager at Chesham. Dulwich at that time were a very well-regarded club and certainly on an equal with Wickham, really. Well, we played in the same league, but not, not as organised as Wickham. Dulwich were rather run by ex-players who changed their mind most weeks. And it was a shame, really, because it was, it was a wonderful club and had a lovely ground, but never really had the organisation that, that Wickham had got by having a full-time professional coach. I found myself one week without a game, met somebody from Chesham and said, oh, I, I, I haven't got a game this week. And he said, oh, come and play with us. So they put me into the Chesham team just for that one week. It then started, oh, come and play for us, come and play for us. And eventually it was arranged that I would go and play for them as player-manager, which was a mistake, really, because it was just too hard work. I didn't seem to 
get an awful lot of cooperation. Everything you did wasn't necessarily to everybody's liking. And um, in the end, it just got too much for me and I gave it up. And has it been great for you to be a fan of Wickham as well and just following their progress over the years? Oh, yes, 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 yes. I, I, I had a season to... A good friend of my, my, another ex player called Jackie Tomlin, we had seats together as season ticket holders for all a long period. And we we had all the, all the Martin O'Neill era. We sat together... I, I don't know how many seasons, but quite, quite a number of seasons we, we were there cheering on Wickham and, and saw all, all, all the wonderful Martin O'Neill years. And I imagine as well it's been really interesting for you to see how the game has changed since when you played it. Oh, well, yes, 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 yes. The, the, the pitches are much better now. We played in quite heavy boots in those days. The balls were much lighter now that... Again, they were quite heavy leather balls. No, the whole the whole game is altered completely. Not not everything nowadays is better than it used to be, but there's there's an awful lot of it which is. Would you quite like to be playing now? <laughs> I, I don't know if I'd be good enough. <laughs> uh, the game has changed. I don't know whether my my game really was. I could run and run and run and run and run. And as a midfielder, I was always in the game, uh, not necessarily doing anything <laughs> particularly well, but uh, always in it. I think it's changed so much now, I would have, I'm would not, not quite sure where I'd fit into it. Sure. And I know you were a very uh, good all-round sportsman as well, playing cricket to a good level as well. Oh, I did play cricket, but I... <laughs> I could never start at the beginning of the cricket season because the football overlapped, and I could never play cricket at the end of the season because the football season was just starting. So I did play cricket, but uh, I, I wouldn't pretend I was any, any anything anything very special at all. <laughs> and do you think being so active has, has really helped in your in your long life? I, no, I don't think it has necessarily. In fact, it hasn't helped my limbs at all. My knees and my hips are completely shot. So uh, that, that's got, <laughs> my, my sporting life has probably hasn't helped that at all. I've never smoked. I've never really bothered about drinking. I, I've led a, a, a fairly dull, modest life, I think, and that may have helped me. I'm, I don't know. <laughs> we must congratulate you on, on reaching such a great age hope you have a very happy birthday uh, obviously your, your, your wife as well you've been married a long time and you've got a great great family so I uh, hope you really enjoy your celebrations thank you very much indeed a real privilege to speak to Dick Tunmer uh, from his home in Bourne End celebrating his 95th birthday today I uh, hope you have a fantastic rest of your day fantastic to share your memories and uh, brilliant to get uh, his thoughts as well not too many chats with Wickham Wanderers X Player Association uh, left of the remainder of the season in fact I've got one next week and then the following week I think is our final show of the season and uh, normally at the end of the campaign we have a compilation uh, which is uh, a brilliant listen some of the, uh, the highlights of the uh, former uh, Sky and Navy quarter uh, player wearers uh, from the past so many eras to cover we've been fortunate enough to speak to uh, over this last season that's on the way in the coming weeks uh, on next week's show we'll chat to Mark Gateskill who's the uh, chief executive of the Wickham Wanderers Foundation you might have heard the news that we mentioned recently that Wickham Wanderers women have now uh, been uh, come under their umbrella for next season exciting time for them uh, last night uh, Chair Boys Chat something which is on uh, every Wednesday night uh, featured a very special guest senior first team player Jason McCarthy uh, bringing men together to talk about the highs and lows of the weekend's football uh, as well as uh, anything else that's on their minds. It's a brilliant initiative. You can get in touch with Sam uh, at the foundation. Uh, Sam's email address is sam.white at wwfc.com to receive a link to take part in future 
chair boys chats uh, they really are really really popular and often feature uh, some of the first team getting involved with that as well last night as I say Jason McCarthy was a very special guest uh, using uh, his uh, experience to uh, really help uh, many people and uh, I must say I uh, hope you found that useful if you were involved in that as I say well worth tuning in to next week as well Wednesdays at 7 check out the Wiccan Wanderers Foundation's website and pages on the Wiccan Wanderers website as well for full details and as mentioned uh, Mark Gateskill from the Foundation he's the uh, Chief Executive We'll be catching up with him. Uh, Lots of other news from the Foundation to bring you as well here on Wickham Sound. Online, on Radio Player and on 106.6 FM. This is Wickham Sound. The Wickham Wanderers Show. Thursdays from 7. Final part of this week's Wickham Wanderers show still to come. We'll hear from manager Matt Bloomfield looking ahead to the trip, long trip, to Carlisle on Saturday. You'll hear the match live here, of course, on Wickham Sound on 106.6 and on Wanderers TV as well. But first, we shift our attention to Wickham Wanderers women. Only two uh, league games left of their season. They've got some post-season friendlies to come. Uh, the Sponsors Cup as well next month, which I'm very much looking forward to going to after being invited. And an awards evening as well next month too. Uh, but on Sunday, an unfortunate 4-2 defeat uh, someone who played in that game is Imani Kasim, who uh, joined the club not that long ago, and I've been very pleased to uh, catch up with her and find out how her football journey started. I've been playing football since I was, say, around six, seven, but I never really saw it as a career. It was a hobby for me. I used to always play with the boys around my area and for my school team. And then, yeah, it was only when I was, I would say, 15 or 16, I started seeing that women were actually playing for teams. So I signed up for a team. I ended up getting in. And then, yeah, it all started there. So it's nice. And how did it come about finding your position? Did you, did you sort of drift quite naturally out wide? or did Because it's quite an exciting position, isn't it, to be able to, to take players on, obviously, and, and use your pace? To be honest, I started off as a goalkeeper. Oh, really? My first start. Yeah. Um, I think I was in year four. And I just, because I was really quick, um, I used my reflexes in goal. And then um, I started playing outfield and then I started noticing that I could retain the ball and I was really quick when I had it. So I went from goalkeeper to playing on the wing. And yeah, I just stuck to that ever since I was, say, I think around 15. And it must have been great for you to be playing for, you know, at a more senior level as well. Yeah, definitely. I feel like it's improved my game a lot, especially because I used to play at academy slash like under 23 level. And what I noticed is playing for a senior team, there's more physicality involved and the game's just different, to be honest. So it's a lot to pick up on and a lot to learn. It must be great for you at this time as well, because women's football is having such a a sort of rise in popularity as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel as though since the women have been doing well in the Euros, women's football has grown in England, especially. And a lot of girls have been participating in the sport. So to be in this position where I can influence girls who are like much younger than me, I feel like it's very cool because when I was eight or nine, I didn't really have anyone to look up to. But now they have so many women to look up to. So it's, it's a really good role to play, to be honest, especially in this time. And especially in your position as well, because you, you can really sort of excite fans. And, and like you say, especially younger girls and, and women can really sort of look at what you're doing and be impressed and perhaps like to try and do something similar themselves. Yeah, no, I agree because growing up, especially when I was watching men's football, what really got me into football was watching a lot of wingers. Like, for example, Neymar or like some tens, like some cams, like, for example, Messi and Ronaldo, like all these players, it really motivated me to like play in this position and learn skills. So obviously for myself, being a bit skillful, I hope it's like really just interesting for younger girls to see, to be honest. And do those skills, do you find that they come quite naturally to you? Or is it obviously something you have to have to work on quite a bit in practice, but it must be great to be able to, when, when sort of certain things come off for you? It came really naturally. Like I I started playing football before I started training. So a lot of the skills I learned to do, I, I just picked up on myself. So when I actually did start training, if a coach would tell me to do a skill, I wouldn't be able to do it. But if you asked me to do a 1v1, I'd be able to just create something in the moment. So for me, I feel like it's all in the moment. Yeah, definitely. Nice to have that improvisation as well, because I guess you'll probably find yourself in in different situations as well on the pitch. Exactly, exactly. I find it when I think of a skill and I try to do it, 
it won't really work as well as me just having the ball and having that 1v1 and just doing it and getting past the player, to be honest. It comes really natural when I don't think about it. When I think about it, I don't feel like it goes as well. And are there any particular female players, say, in the WSL or England, who particularly inspire you as well? And I guess, you know, you probably look out for, for certain players who play in your position too. One of my favourite players in the WSL at the moment, I'd say, is Chloe Kelly. I feel like she's a really entertaining player. The way she, her style of play is just, yes, yeah, entertaining. And, yeah, she's she's good. And how did your move to Wickham come about? <laughs> I've known Carl, Carl for a while because I played against Wickham for like a local... I was with a local team. It was actually my sister's team. And they were short on players. I think it was a friendly, so they just asked me to come down. And I remember scoring that game, and it was actually a, it was a funny goal, to be honest, with a funny celebration. And then ever since I've been in contact with Carl, and then I was at Ashford last season, and he noticed that this year I wasn't playing any games. And then when he told me about the promotion Wickham were trying to get for next season, it really caught my attention, and I was really interested in being a part of the move to be honest so yeah and it's not too far so and the girls are lucky <laughs> it's ideal isn't it because yeah. it must sound like such a great project to be involved with and you know what Carl and the team are building and the, the kind of the focus and the drive of the other players too yeah definitely um the coaches are really nice and they're remotivating and obviously um they try their hardest to make sure we're in our best shape and I really appreciate that from them and yeah, I like the work rate from the girls. Like, we always go in with the mentality to win in training. The intensity is always high. So, yeah, I feel like it's somewhere where I can develop myself. And obviously, I hope I can bring my skills to help, you know, accomplish that goal next year. And do you feel you've settled in really easily as well? Yeah, definitely. I was a bit nervous coming in because obviously it was a new team. But the girls are really welcoming. So, yeah, it was really, it was a nice introduction. And what have been your initial impressions of the games that you have played? So far, I think we've... I like the way the girls gel together and obviously we know our weaknesses and our strengths. And since I'm new to the team, like I've gained a quick understanding on how the style of play is at Wickham. I just I feel like it's going really well, especially in the games. I imagine that really suits your game as well. Yeah, definitely. Because um, I feel like one of my strengths is I'm really quick, so playing with three at the back and playing as a fullback, I feel like I can use my strengths to get back and then attack. So it's really fun for me. It's tiring, but it's really fun. <laughs> and you had a great chance early on on Sunday, of course, and that, that must have been great just to sort of, you know, take on the defenders and, and come so close to scoring as well. Yeah, um, it was quite frustrating, actually. But, you know, I hope I can recreate that and actually score this time because it was a very good run. <laughs> um, you know, it is... Um, I always do the hard parts, but I never finish my dinner. So that's obviously something I have to get done. Absolutely. Must finish your dinner. Um, <laughs> but exactly. I guess as well, it must be equally disappointing because it was like the last home game of the season. And, you know, obviously, you know, supporters got to see a lot of goals and obviously the, the great work rate as well. But but disappointing to come away with nothing, really. Yeah, no, I agree. I feel like we all worked as hard as we could. Like all the girls put in 110% and we tried to get the result. Like we went far off. Um, at some point, there were two goals ahead and then we would catch up and then there'd only be one goal ahead. And then, unfortunately, they would score another goal. And I think it was just harder towards the end of the game. I felt like when I scored after the half time, everyone was more confident and I thought we were back in the game. But after we conceded, like five minutes later, I think everyone's head just dropped. But yeah, we go again. It was unfortunate because it was the last home game. But there's more games to come, so... I'm sure we'll work on what we need to work on and come back stronger. And it's really nice as well. As you say, it's, it's great that you kind of you settled in so well to the team and you know you can look forward to, to next season, as you say, hopefully going for the promotion. You'll have more of an idea of you know the, the competition in terms of the other, other teams in, that you'll be coming up against as well. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with that because I feel like coming into the team at this time, I've gotten a better understanding of the league and the team. So... And obviously our team, so coming into next year, when we go for obviously our goal, I feel like I'll understand everything much more so it'll be easier and hopefully it will just flow. It must be really exciting for you as well going into the into the new season and, and what you can achieve with the club. As you say, hopefully hopefully scoring and assisting plenty. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> 
I meant to ask you as well about sort of combining, you know, football with your kind of outside football stuff. Is that quite nice with the, the balance for, for sort of training as well and, and how you sort of combine that with what you do outside of football too? Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like my life is just football, to be honest. <laughs> so outside of Wickham, obviously I do a bit of content creating, especially for like younger girls to see so they can be influenced by like us who are obviously trying to get their pros and in the football world. So I feel like just doing that all the time keeps me sharp. So when I do come into training and games, you know, I've really spent half my week on the pitch. So yeah, I'm sharp. I guess. Great to chat to Imani here on the show, uh, who had a great performance on Sunday. Uh, didn't get the result the team were after, but a 4 2 defeat against Winchester. Great to see Amy Leach among the goals as well, who we've had on the show a couple of times. Uh, be chatting to Carl, the manager, before the end of the season as well, uh, wishing the chair girls the, all the best for their remaining two league games of the season, both away, of course, uh, rearranged fixtures. And uh, now, though, speaking of away games, uh, we had a rearranged fixture for the men on Tuesday night against Port Vale. Uh, that because they had a frozen pitch in January. Two more away games to come, including Saturday up at Carlisle. And uh, as Phil mentioned a little earlier on, the uh, mode of transport being taken. Here's Matt Bloomfield. We're going off on the train on Friday, so we were looking forward to, for, to that. But yeah, we, we, we're looking at each other a lot at the moment and, and coaches and, and team meeting rooms and meetings. Um, so we have to be really careful with the group how much we can train. It's you know a lot in the classroom and, and the meeting room and, and talking through a lot of situations because obviously we need to keep the energy for the pitch. But um, if we can play with that character and energy again on Saturday, then we, we hope to go to Carlisle and, uh, and be as competitive as we can be. Carlisle already relegated, so they're obviously looking uh, next season in League Two and already planning for that. How do you plan for a game against a side like that? It must be very unpredictable. Um, yeah, I guess so, but I would probably suggest that we've been very unpredictable ourselves in the last you know, four games, the amount of changes we've had to make each game to play the amount of games we have in that time. So um, I don't know what our team will be on Saturday right at this point. We have to count the knocks and count the, count the heads, um, see who's going to have the energy to go again and, and pick a team that we believe can play with the manner that we want to play with. So whilst Carlisle may be unpredictable, we will be ourselves, I would suggest, and it's going to be like that until the end of the season with the games we've got to play. And you mentioned the train ride up there. Wickham Wanderers are picking up momentum as a train now in these final stages of the season. That must please you as well. Yeah, absolutely, because, you know, as a manager, losing is, is horrible. The pain is horrible. So to, to win some games and to build the optimism and momentum that we want to do into the summer, like I said, mate, um, I feel like the, the, the January window was huge for us. Um, huge for us. I feel like we were able to put some real bases down for, for what our team wants to look like moving forward. You know, obviously we've got some boys on loan that we're, we'll look at. We've got some boys that are permanent that we're, we're, we're happy and, and really pleased to have amongst us with the group that we've already got. So, yeah, I think it's a real, um, real exciting time for us to really put the pieces in place and um, to plan for the summer to hopefully gain that momentum and, and carry that through the summer into next season. I'm not sure what kit we're wearing on Saturday, but it seems like a very, very long time ago where we launched the green kit with Ryan though, because it was 30 years since Wickham Wanderers played at Carlisle for their first ever Football League game. We're back up there on Saturday. It does seem like a very long time ago. It, it does. Um, I mean, it, you know, it's been, you know, in, in the manner of time and the manner of events, it's been a long season. Um, you know, there's a lot that's happened. There's been a lot of transition and change. And with change comes tough moments. And, and as, you know, there's been a lot of research in terms of, of change. And the middle ground is always clunky and it's always messy and it always looks like it's going to be hard work. But eventually, if you can keep clear minds and steady minds and, and you know, muddle your way through that with, with what you want to do, you can come through the other side. You know, we're, we're far from, you know, I'm certainly not going to get, you know, we've got a lot of work to do mate not gonna get ahead of ourselves there's a lot more work to do to get to where we want to be but you know we've got some real solid foundations and, and, and we're excited to build on that well enjoy the train ride on friday <laughs> top man i'll see you on it won't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great to hear from the manager on the show as always and we wish the team all the best for saturday uh, when they take on carlisle united away you'll hear the whole match live here on wickham sound on 106.6 uh, luke will keep you up to date over online as well you'll get uh, half and full time updates from Phil as well at the ground uh, another game of course on Tuesday evening don't forget uh, that uh, will be again live on the radio and on Wanderers TV Ringing the Blues precedes that you'll get all the post-match reaction from Saturday and uh, just a reminder of course that we'll be back uh, at the same time next week for our penultimate show of the season I think yeah no it will be won't it uh, including a chat with Mark Gateskill more from Wickham Wanderers X Players Association uh, we'll catch up with Phil of course hear more from the manager as well and uh, lots more to bring you too um, including, of course, the week after uh, our predictions as to where 
where we thought the team would end up at the end of the season. See how that matches up. You can find full details on the website. Don't forget, as I say, pre-match drills uh, available on Wanderers TV. And uh, have a fantastic week. Uh, Fingers crossed for the uh, continued strong end to the season uh, for the final two games for Wickham Wanderers. Have a good rest of your week and uh, join us next week. Don't forget the podcast available for you to catch up with as well.